Can you just tell us like what is happening here today? So what we are trying to do today, we are just trying to make an awareness obviously for the people of, of Queensland, particularly in Brisbane, uh, what's happening and we're trying to highlight uh, what's happening with the people of Kashmir. Because of uh, they, they have been a long history of uh, conflict there, uh, which, in, which started when India and Pakistan got independence from British. And uh, basically, Kashmir was, uh, long story short, divided between two, two of these new, newly uh, formed nations. And what happened in that, uh, at that time is actually land was divided and brothers and families were divided from on the each side. And that's where the conflict kind of started because then people are not talking to other part of the country. Now, India and Pakistan, as, as you might know, um, or your listeners might know, they have really... Uh, they re they have le really a bad relationship. They already always have been that because when independence was taken uh, given to uh, India and Pakistan, it was a bloody uh, bloody conflict that was happening. That was happening, and and that that created a bitterness bitterness on both sides of uh, both sides of the government, and all all the people were apprehensive of each each side. Um, they thought that other side is coming to get us, and. With that frame, frame, frame uh, of mind, people never have sympathies towards people of Kashmir because they either they, they either uh, view it as a sectarian conflict or give it a religious tinge, which is not what the conflict of Kashmir is all about. Kashmir conflict of Kashmir is about the Kashmiri people and our right to have a self determination that, like any other country in the world has, like India did from British, and like you know how many countries we see. Um, South Sudan in recent history, if you go not that far, far ago, people do get uh, independence and people do have right and that's all Kashmiris are asking for from anywhere, anyone who's actually listening to, uh, to people of India, to people of Pakistan, to around the world, especially here uh, in Australia. We want people to just listen to us, just support us, just for, n not because who we are or what we want, just as people, from person to person, support us and say, yes, you know what, let's give them a self-determination if they want to go with India, with Pakistan, go independent, let's, let's do it. Let's finish this conflict. It has been 70, 72 long, long years for people of Kashmir and we just want some sort of closure. It has been generation after generation after generation and we are at that point where we want something World community come together and say, you know what, this is time. This is time to resolve this issue. And what happened on August 5 last year? So August 5 uh, was a particularly black day for people of Kashmir because in uh, when basically part of Kashmir acceded to India, um, it was ruled by a, a king who went to India said that if you give me defense at the moment, I'm gonna, you know, succeed to India. I'm gonna be part of India but you give us a special status and which Indian government said, you know what, yep, we're going to give you a special status. Your majority Muslim, uh, 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 you know, state will give you a spe special set status where people from rest of the India can't come in and take your lands, you know, your culture will be saved that way. And that was the basically uh, uh, enshrined uh, amendment on Indian constitution, which is called Article 370. They basically said, you know what, yep, here we write in our own constitution that we're going to give you this. and we. Uh, and you signed this and you know that's rest, restlessly that India gave us special status for some time we had our Prime Minister our own flag but that changed slowly the these things eroded and August 5 last year coming back to that point India unilaterally said you know what we signed agreement between you and me I'm gonna, not going to abide by it I'm just gonna go willy-nilly I'm, I'm gonna do it by myself I don't give you any special status I'm gonna, you know, do whatever I want, basically, um, to you, your people, your state, because now uh, I don't care about the agreement I signed 70 years ago. And what about the human rights abuses that are still happening today? I guess there, there are, like, you know, um, to give you an example, if someone is going out to buy basic necessities, milk, bread, you know, stuff like that, they have to pass Indian checkpoints, and we, like, you know, these soldiers, they abuse small children, which creates resentment when they are growing up, because kids have memories they're not going to forget and we have seen in last especially last one decade because people have like you know the new generation has grown into into this conflict and they have all they have seen is like you know Indian army stopping them to doing basic stuff and have resentment towards that and it has created a lot of conflict for the new generation and they they are kind of fed up of this and that's where the conflict is reigniting for the new generation as we see in Palestine and other places you know one generation our generation is coming towards an end the new generation is coming up and they are 
they are more resentment towards Indian Indian government, Indian soldiers because I don't know, do you know this or not, or, or your viewers might be aware, there is one soldier for every nine Kashmiris in, uh, in Kashmir at the moment. One soldier for nine Kashmiris. To give, put you in perspective, there are uh, 4,000 people has one doctor, but nine people have one army person there. We have, talking about COVID and stuff, uh, in, in that sense, we have 71,000 or 80,000 people have one ventilator in Kashmir at the moment, but we have nine <laughs> for nine people we have one army person gives you an idea how much restricted moments and how, what liberties we have and that's not only just people that like you know the uh, indian government recently pa passed some media acts and stuff like that where journalists like yourself you might not be able to uh, because indian government will censor what they think is coverage for their government you know what i mean to say so they have right now to censor it they have right to close of, of uh, you know journalist shops so to speak and uh, that is what's happening every day um, and it's all happening in this covid where india is i think up on number three in the worldwide infection list now because um, everybody is so scared of themselves and their family rightly so and these things in the background are happening and they are they are unfortunate and nobody is nobody is raising voice for that yeah. and what can people in australia do to help well people in australia the the, the one thing that i want people of australia to do is just basically read read a bit about Kashmir it's a beautiful most beautiful part of, like at least for me maybe I have bias but it is it is a beautiful part you know that a lot of uh, uh, travelers that came centuries and centuries ago and they have like we have such a rich and uh, rich history going back 5,000 years such a beautiful mountain snow or you know it's called Switzerland of uh, 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 you know of Asia uh, because it's such a beautiful, big, picturesque environment uh, in Kashmir. Such a beautiful people, so hospita hospitable, and you know, I'm <laughs> probably having a bias about that as well. But that's that's how they are. They are really warm. They like to talk to people. They like to invite them to their homes, and that's that's how Kashmiris are. And that's what we want to portray to Australian people. We are, if we are, you know, somewhere in Brisbane City, uh, you know, town hall there somewhere holding our posters and banners, come, please come and talk to us. We want to talk to you, we want to make you aware, if anything, about Kashmir and what it is.